Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses, I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, we're going to do an update to the Las Vegas real estate market. We are. It is Monday, October 16th. This data is super brand new, just came out. So here we go. Market action index 43. It was a little less than last week, but it's basically, it's still, it says slight seller's advantage, right. which is what so it said last week. What did you expect? Did you expect for it to be the same or did you expect for it to go down? Put, write a comment and tell us what, what you were expecting. All right. Now we'll jump over to real-time market profile. Uh, basically, the numbers have not changed significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing the um, softness. Right. So remember last year what Todd said, that the best time to buy a house are which months? Waiting, waiting. Okay. It's October, November, December, Maybe January. I said that in June of yeah. last year. And so, it, those were the four mo best months you could have bought a house in right. Vegas. And then remember, Zillow told you that the best time to buy a house was actually last week. Last and we, week. And we told you about that last month. So are you paying attention? Okay. <laughs> What's really interesting here is this per square foot. In July, it was 258. It normally drops mm -hmm. going into the... But it's it, it it did tick down from 262 to 261, but still higher than it was. That's unusual. It usually drops a bit right. from how it, what it was in the usually peaks in you know May June and then drops off but it's gone up that's mm -hmm. kind of weird we're going to show you some more stuff on here um, the other thing on here is this inventory want it in July we had twenty two hundred houses on the market in Vegas mm -hmm. if I had told you how many more houses should have hit the market in August September October three more months. With 2,200, you would have probably thought quite a few. Right. I mean, I would have thought that at some point the dam's got to break, but I don't think the dam's going to break this year. We're, we're, it, we've only added about 250 houses right. net. So that means houses are coming on the market, but they're still selling. And with the low number of sales, it's kind of making it harder to get a real accurate picture because of where the sales are happening, which are mostly in the lower end. Right. So the fewer the number of transactions, um, the more difficult it is to really see a trend because every transaction has an outsized impact on uh, on these trend lines. If we had more data, it, then, then the trend would be more obvious. There, there wouldn't be um, so much volatility. Here's a big problem, inventory. Um, you can see it's kind of starting to tick up a little bit. Mm -hmm. but. Every other year at this time of year, it, it was it peaked and it was starting to drop off. So don't expect this to get much better. Expect as stuff comes on the market for people to go buy it for the most part over the next few months. Right. I mean, we started out the year saying that it would be a very boring year. There wouldn't be a whole lot of transactions. There wouldn't be a lot of uh, upside or downside. It would just be kind of a boring year. And that's the way it's kind of been. Median list price here, you can see it's starting to decline. This is the normal seasonal decline. What's interesting, though, is we're still well above by like 50,000 higher than we were this time last year. Mm -hmm. This time last year, median price was about 500. We're at 550. Right. So that is thanks to a lack of inventory and more buyers chasing fewer houses. You know, interest rates are higher. Um, the pain of interest rates has been pretty persistent for over a year and, you know, prices are going up and they're going up, like I said before, because we have more buyers chasing fewer houses. Um, here's the price per square foot chart. This is far more accurate than median price, which is affected by if more or less homes sell in higher or lower prices, mm -hmm. right? Now, if that little hump, you could basically put, a, put like a little line between those two dots and connect that because that was artificial. Mm -hmm. That was the last gasp of people trying to buy a house with when rates were still under like 4%. Like they were like rates were starting to climb and they had locked their loan and they just didn't care. They were like, I'm buying a house, even if I got to overpay for it. Mm -hmm. So you had bidding wars because people were more concerned about getting their loan under 5%. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of people that were selling at that time too that were just you know, it was crazy where people would just, you know, go on the market. We get four or five offers way over list. So that's not like you, that is not the end all be all for what homes should be worth. Uh, but you can see the trend here. It's pretty straightforward. We're up from last year for price per square foot. And you can see that we're just been sort of ticking up pretty slowly. Even with interest rates, we want to have been six and a half to seven and a half percent now for a, a year. Right. 
right? So it's like the little train that could. <laughs> little train that could. Okay, Wanda, let's talk about this median list price where we broke it into the four parts of the market. Mm -hmm. The blue line is the top quarter of homes. And then the bottom three quarters of the market are the rest. Mm -hmm. Now, if I showed you this chart without the top mm -hmm. going all crazy, Wanda, this looks kind of like a normal market. Home mm -hmm. prices are just kind of, price per square foot are just kind of, or meet this is median list price, are just kind of chugging along. Right. So look, if it wasn't for the top part of the market, then the market would be semi-normal. Um, I mean, semi-normal in the sense of home appreciation and time on the market and all of that. Uh, what's not normal is the low inventory, which of course leads to low number of transactions. The top part of the market has been volatile. Um, and it hasn't just been volatile here in Vegas, it's been volatile in a lot of places. But you know, today we're talking about Vegas and you can see how volatile the top part of the market has been. And remember those price swings are also um, in some ways more dramatic because you're dealing with bigger dollar figures, right? Uh, you know, if you're talking about 10% at you know, a $300,000 property, that's $30,000. But if you're talking 10% at $3 million, now it's $300,000. So now it looks a lot more dramatic. If you look at this chart, that blue line, November, December, January, were the three months where median list price was the lowest. Mm -hmm. Those were the probably the best months to a bot. And here we are, you can see what's going to happen here. You can basically just continue this, uh, this out uh, functionally. You know, right. so, so when he's saying November, December, January, he's talking about you went under contract in October, you closed in November because that's when the numbers get recorded. So kind of keep oh, it's that in mind. Oh, median list price. Oh, a list price. I'm this sorry. This is list price, not price I, per square foot. I thought you were talking about price per square foot. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that was just single family homes. Mm -hmm. Now what we're going to do is how are condos looking? Condos, surprisingly, here you can see, uh, 43 market action index, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, hand in hand, very similar market. Um, over here on the real time market profile, this it looks like very little has happened. That median list price of basically 315 has not changed mm -hmm. in months. It's been 315 for months. Uh, median price to new listings, you see, just goes up and down, bounces around 280. Uh, per square foot's been 266 effectively for months. The condo market is very, very predictable and stable. Mm -hmm. Now, Juana, this is a completely different market than single family homes. Why is that? So because you have basically two groups of people here. Okay. You have investors paying cash, and then you have uh, people kind of like the entry level, right? Because the, the price point is lower. Uh, it's a little deceiving, I think, because condos tend to have higher HOA dues. So I think that your payment is pretty close to what it would be if you were buying a house that maybe had a lesser HOA or no HOA. But that, that's kind of another story. Uh, and a lot of condos are purchased cash just because of the price point. Um, this is next one here is median list price. This is a little inaccurate. That little jump there at the end, you can disregard that. <laughs> what happened was back in the summer, Altos Research for some reason decided the high rises were now part of mm -hmm. this. So it, it, this is why we tell you price per square foot is better than median list price. Because you can see what happened when all of a sudden they took their data. The whole, none of the prices changed in this chart. But what happened is they just stuck a bunch of new data at the very top. Oh, look at, let's put these, you know, couple hundred high rises in here too. So all of a sudden the median goes, oh, we need to move up because we need to be halfway between the number one house and the bottom house. That's what median is. If there's a right. thousand houses, it's picks number 500 and whatever that is, is exactly the median. So let me give you an example. Most condos in Vegas are well under 500,000, right? Most of them actually under 300,000. But because they added the high rises in there, now the $8 million Waldorf Astoria unit that was purchased cash is in there. <laughs> yeah. So that just completely screws up the numbers. Here's inventory. You can see inventory is doing pretty much the same thing. Um, also, you can disregard that little jump in inventory. Inventory is still relatively low, not as low as it was in 2021. But if you look at 2018, 2019, 2020, we should be at about 2,000 uh, or no, 20. Yeah, 2,000. Well, that's actually 2,500. But we're down about a little over 1,000 mm -hmm. or 1,500. So we're way up 
or way down. But remember, that's artificial because they also threw in the high rises. So um, inventory is still very low in condos as well. Okay. All right. So, Juana, yes. uh, what, la before we jump off, because this is going to be a pretty short one today, why do most first-time investors actually prefer, and most investors actually prefer a single-family home over a condo? So um, I kind of touched on that a little bit. Part of that is that HOA fee. Okay. So that HOA fee can be pretty substantial in a condo. And if your cash flow is pretty tight, then you certainly don't want to have that added expense. Um, and then another reason is because usually for the amount of money that you're spending, you can get a little more rent out of a house that, than you can out of a condo. So let me give you an example. Uh, you know, a 1,200 square foot condo is going to rent for, let's say, $1,200. A 1,200 square foot house is going to rent for maybe 1450. So that 250 is a good chunk of money. And then when you add, you know, the fact that in a with a condo you might have a couple hundred dollar HOA fee. Well, with the house, if you have an HOA fee, it's probably going to be more nominal, more like 45 dollars. Uh, so again, that that's a pretty pretty big difference when you're talking when you're trying to manage numbers that are so tight. Uh, in particular, it may be if you're financing, that that's another issue. You might have a higher interest rate on a condo than you than you might on a house. So those are all considerations for investors and for um, and for owner occupants. Yeah. Also, historically, it's easier for a if you're selling the house in the future, it's easier for that future buyer to get. A financing right because almost all single-family homes will qualify for FHA or VA but a lot of condos won't because they're for the whatever the reason. occupancy yeah the other reason is um, you know you have more flexibility right I mean you just have more flexibility with, with a single-family home uh, you have more flexibility regarding pets for example so you know with a condo maybe the condo association doesn't allow pets uh, over a certain weight or you know something like that well with a single family home you have a lot more flexibility plus generally you have a yard so again that opens up your your pool for uh, potential tenants as far as tenants with uh, with needs for a yard whether it be for uh, for a pet or for a young person or just to enjoy a, a backyard uh, so those are all interesting things uh, and lastly single family homes tend to have garages uh, so people who are fond of their vehicles or not particularly fond of a really hot car in here in Las Vegas in the summertime, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they value having a garage. So an anaconda generally is not going to have a garage. They'll probably have a carport maybe, but not a garage. Some do, but, but not all of them. So those are all considerations. Yep. Uh, we're going to keep doing the, we'll do the weekly updates. You know, what we expect is... Now, I know that a lot of the crash bros and doomers are going to say, oh, we're finally seeing house prices. This is the crash. We're watching it in real time. And we heard that last. We heard it in 2019. That was the first housing crash that never happened. And then we heard it last year, too. Of course, that housing crash didn't happen. Home price has been going up all year. Um, so this is normal, though, right, Wanda? This is seasonal. This is seasonal. And if you want to watch something in real time, what you're watching is us age in real time. And to really get a good picture of that, go back and watch our videos from 10, 12 years ago, and you'll see the progression I, uh, of, our, of our aging. I think the videos go back 14 or 15 years. It's go. pretty funny. Go back on the channel and look at some of the older videos. We look mm -hmm. substantially younger. I have yes. a lot more hair <laughs> and uh, everything. So, All right. So um, tell us what you think is going on in the marketplace. We'd love to hear from you. We appreciate your real estate comments. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.